Hello my friends, I'm John Laspina, your carnivore teacher. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting topic I discovered and it's about the sugar substitute called allulose. Have you heard of allulose? There are many substitutes that people can use instead of sugar that do not raise your blood glucose. They don't stimulate an insulin response usually. And those are stevia, monk fruit, erythritol. Allulose is one of those. And it's a really cool molecule. And I want to share this with you and take everything I say with a grain of salt because the research on allulose is fresh and new and there's not a lot out there. But I wanted to share it with you because I found it pretty interesting. I, being a sugar addict, I am, I can't get enough of it once I taste it in my mouth. I can't have anything sweet or I can't stop thinking about it. So I test and have tested these sugar substitutes to see if I can use them to get at my addiction, but not have the negative side effects that sugar gives the body. So let's talk about allulose. Allulose is a stereoisomer. Stereo, two channels, right? Well, a stereoisomer is a molecule that looks just like another molecule, but mirror imaged. So it's not exactly the same, but it, it's very similar. It's opposite in molecular structure. So if you have on the left side, fructose, which we all know is a monosaccharide, it's sticky, it fructates, it, gl it glycates, but we call it fructates because it's fructose. It sticks on, it causes fatty liver. It's not healthy to have a lot of fructose in the body. The mirror image to fructose is allulose. It looks the same except mirror image. There are benefits to allulose, however, unlike fructose. Allulose does not fructate onto your cells and cause damage. Allulose does not cause tooth decay. It doesn't promote cavities at all. Isn't that interesting that fructose does, but allulose does not? And it's one-tenth of the calories of table sugar, which is sucrose. So interestingly, can I use allulose now and put allulose on everything and get at my addiction? Well, I tried it. I bought the product. It's pretty expensive too. You get one little bag. It's about 10 to $15 a bag because it's very difficult to extract allulose from its natural sources. So it costs a lot of money for them to make it in mass quantities. But the demand is out there now because of all of the sugar substitute and they want to compete. And so you can buy pure D-allulose and you can put it in your coffee and you can sprinkle it on things. And it really is sweet and it's really good. And I tried it and it's delicious. So what I would do is I take my bag of pork rinds, which I used to only eat with a meal, I didn't use them as a snack. And I got the plain unflavored salted. It's fried in its own rendered pork fat. And I would sprinkle allulose in the bag and shake up the bag, like shake and bake, right? And then I would eat the pork rind and oh my gosh, it was like candy. So good because the fat in the pork rind and the sweetness of the allulose, it was just like getting at my addiction. And so I would eat half a bag and save the half a bag for the next day. Then I'd eat the other half a bag and I considered a half a bag a serving. Well, what does an addict do? The addict can't stop thinking about something that's so amazing that they're addicted to. So in my brain, here's what my addiction brain did is even though it wasn't sucrose, even though it wasn't raising my blood sugar, even though it was not stimulating an insulin response, which can be checked with a blood meter, and I did check it and I got no insulin response. I had no raised blood sugar when I ate allulose. So it, it's true. But here's the but part. The addiction part is so amazingly good to me that all I could think about was getting at that bag again. And I would have to use my own self-control and say, no, John, have the other half of the bag as a snack tomorrow. And I 
couldn't get the thought out of my head. And I pushed it till the next day and I couldn't wait till lunch was over and I would count my hours and I would say, okay, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. My stomach, I should be able to have this. And I could get at the bag and finish the half a bag. I'd shake it again so the all allulose got on top of the pork rinds and I'd eat it. It was absolutely delicious. Then I went and bought a whole bunch of bags at the store and stocked my cabinet. I had my big bag of allulose and I did this for a week or so and I ate a whole bag a day. Then I was going up to a bag and a half a day because I loved the stuff so much because of the allulose, because of the sweetness. Now, I wasn't stimulating an insulin response. I wasn't raising my blood sugar, but what was I doing? I was overeating. The allulose stimulated my sweet addiction in my brain and it made me want to have more and more and more. Didn't matter if my stomach was full, didn't matter if I was hungry or not, I wanted that sweet taste. And that is addiction, my friends. You can even become addicted to a sugar substitute. So I threw the rest of the bag of allulose away after I finished the pork rinds <laughs> and I stopped buying more. And I also noticed my weight was going up when I was eating all these pork rinds. I was gaining weight. I had to stop eating all this stuff. I was just eating more volume because the allulose was making me just want more and more and more. So I stopped. So I share with you that allulose is an amazing mirrored image to fructose. It's an amazing stereoisomer. It's pretty cool. It has all these wonderful GLP-1 type um, effects, very similar to those drugs that people take to lose weight. Like if you use allulose, you get a little, a little bloating feeling in your guts and you don't want to eat more food physically. Like it has a little bit of a glucagon peptide one type response. But for people like me, I can't even do allulose because it stimulates my sweet addiction. Even though it didn't glycate and even though it didn't have an insulin response and it didn't raise my blood sugar, it made me eat too much and I couldn't stop thinking it. It changed my brain waves because all I could think about was getting more and more and more. So I pass this little bit of information on to you about the sugar substitute allulose. I share my experiment with you, my N equals one experiment. It's unique to me. Now you may not have a sugar addiction like I do. Maybe you can use it in your coffee a little bit. If you, I don't drink coffee, but if you drink coffee, if you use it in something and you can deal with it and not have a fixation in your brain like I do, then that's great but be honest and true to yourself. And if you do see that you want to abuse it, then you have a problem with it and you stop like I had to stop. If you thought this was a pretty cool video, click the thumbs up. It helps my algorithm. It makes YouTube show the video to more people in different ways. And if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to become one of my subscribers. And if you really like this video and you want to tell other people about allulose, a lot of people made videos about allulose, but this was mine. Share it. Click the share button and send it to Facebook or X or Instagram or any of the other social media sites or in an email or a text so that other people can see it too. I thank you for watching and I hope you have a really great day.